Boya Kasha, check out my car. May no, may no. Coppers, as you've never seen them before. <laughs> whoop, whoop, it's the sound of the police. I pay my taxes that pay all these wages. Reeling from unprecedented cuts in their budget. Nine coppers for one yeah. lad. Well, you You're ridiculous. Yeah. The police are under pressure. Yeah. With crime rates rising, Stop resisting. the officers speak out. Get in the van! To let us know what they really think about us. Subnormal and fucking useless. Why can they not do as all the other normal people do? Do you want to see me tense or something? From the rookies fresh out of training <laughs> to the detectives dealing with the most serious incidents. That's it. Is it Sorry. <laughs> and the response officers on the front line who find themselves up against the worst anti police violence in a generation in the middle of a riot. <laughs> oh, you fucker. <laughs> it's extreme to say we could have been killed, but. It felt like it that night. Police emergency, what's the emergency? Um, yeah, my brother-in-law has just been attacked outside my house. I've got a knife. Right, has he got any injuries at all? Yeah, he's bleeding from his eyes. It's the summer of 2011. Emergency response officers in Nottingham are in pursuit of a suspect in the knife attack. We've got two mixed rails mace, balaclavas, red hats, both with knives. I remember just seeing this glimpse of a figure, uh, all in dark clothing, run towards a park, at which point I just started running after him. It's in the back of your mind that, you know, all the time, this person's got a knife, so you've got to then think, right, is this person willing to turn that on me in order to get away? Well, straight down. Look okay. It's split through here, mate. Gone through there, mate. I just saw a blue jacket. I knew at that point, the likelihood was, he'd gone to ground trying to hide somewhere in a garden, maybe trying to get through the gardens and out onto the street. Girls, go away! Ah, 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 we got him. Ah, Took it, you're right. Stop, stop, stop! Stop! stop. Yeah. Ah, 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 what are you doing? Yeah. What are you letting him do that for? Put your arm stop. out. Let's leave. Good boy. Good you got boy. him, Dougie. Yeah, I've got him. Get on your front. Ah. Get on your front now! Ah. Ah. Put your arm behind your back. I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Oh, mate, look at what he's got. Shall we run, fella? Oh. Right, roll you onto your backside. Oh. Sit up. Down. Get onto your knee. Put your knee down. Get up. Right. Can you check out what you've got to? Because you know. Right. Right, cool here. I do like catching them, doing what they do. When you were younger at school, did you used to play cops and robbers? No. Cowboys and Indians. And you're always a cowboy, you're never an Indian. And you're always a cop, probably never a robber. Have you got anything on you? I'm asking you a question, have you got anything on you? But yeah, I'd say I was definitely on the cop side. So if you were the cowboys, you always had a bigger gang of cowboys against Indians. Um, and you probably played in your back garden so you could save it. It's time to finish now. If I find anything that cuts me, I won't be very happy. Do you understand? I mean, you're going to fall out. What did you find on him? A balaclava. Didn't find a knife. Much to, much to my disgust. Major H, Oscar Papa, 2-4. Papa, 2-4, go ahead. Give us code 2, please. PC Steve Newman and PC Andy Watson are on routine patrol when they spot a car, which doesn't appear to be insured. 
you know how many times I've been pulled, yeah, this I week? I yeah, I've been That's right, then. Let me have a chat with you. Get your hands off me. Let me have a chat with you, then. Just relax. It was immediately on the back foot. It didn't, it didn't like the fact that he'd been stopped by the police. Get your hands relax. off me. Come over here and I'll speak to you over here. Get your hands off me. Get your hands off me now. Get this way. I'll speak to you over here. You speak to me right here. I'll get your no. hands off me. There's no need for you to put your hands on me. Don't there is. Are you grabbing me? Don't walk away. He, he was, he, he was, went mental. You lot are doing my head in. Why? Because you don't leave me alone. First time I've met you, my friend. Listen, mate, all you lot are sausages, mate, yeah? You keep grabbing me and pulling me all the time. What's wrong with you? Have you, have you got nothing better to do? Right. Yes, I I'm a rasta, yeah? I don't do pork, yeah? So step away from me. I don't know if I've got a favourite derogatory word towards police. <laughs> Obvious ones like, you know, it's the pigs, you know, oh, I can smell bacon and stuff like. You don't actually hear that as often as you may think. Smokies. My mate calls me Smokey. Um, Rosers. Filth, fuzz. They refer to you as the poo poo. I don't know where it's come from or who said it, but it happened to us when we were basically taking a car off somebody. And we're taking a car off somebody, he phones up his missus or whatever and gives it a, oh, you never guess what's happening? It's like, right. And, uh, and you just hear him go, it's the poo poo, they're taking my skate man. And that was it. And basically, it was the police taking his car off him. But for him, it was the poo poo taking his skate. Arrest me for what? Right, if you arrest me for what? About, about arrest me for what? Rock and Rasta. Uh, yeah. Go on, go on, arrest me then. Go on, arrest me. What are you grabbing me up for? What are you grabbing me up for? What is your problem? What are you doing me for? Right, we want to check your insurance. We want to check who I'll you get, are. I'll get, you my check I'll get you my trainers. I'll get you my trainers. Right, get no. Your hand no. Off my Stop waving your arms around. Calm get down. Get your hand off my jacket. It doesn't bother us. It doesn't rile us, and that's what they're perhaps wanting. They want. They want to see that we're perhaps either backing down from them or um, are going to say, OK, yeah, you get on your way then. Sorry to have bothered you. Open it up. Treat get yourselves. It. Yo, the sausages, that's why. Yeah. This is all I get. I've had this eight you times this week. Anymore, eight times in one week. Eight times? Yeah, it's all right, because I report these fuckers, man. I don't care. Go on, that's it, right there. You don't need to be looking through the rest of my car. What's wrong with you? Licenses yeah, in there too. Right, I might search your car yet anyway. Search it, I don't care. It's not on to me. <laughs> not, not a problem here. Yeah, you just got to roll with it. Just to ensure that everything's legal. You know, he's got all the necessary documentation. Achieve the end game that we wanted for the reason for stopping him. That's all it was. Simple. Stop you, speak to you. Yeah, and show not all your documents. Not show all your me. documents are in order. Like I'm a kid. Once they're all in order I'm and we're happy and we're satisfied, then you can go about your daily business. Yeah, I, will. I will do. Bye bye, Nathan. Huh? Just said bye bye. See you later. Yeah. Alright, see you later. Bye bye. What did you think of cops when you were a kid? My dad was a cop, so uh, I always looked up to them. What made me cry? Uh, I was cycling, I was a cycle on the pavement, yeah, I was, I was about nine years old, I was cycling on the pavement and he took my name down uh, and I was terrified. Up three, four, travelling to Aces. It's a typically busy Saturday night in the city centre and as the pub's empty, the response officers are called to a drunken fight. <laughs> I've clearly been some sort of fracas and this male's on the floor, being detained. All right, bring your legs round for me. Oh. Sit up. As soon as you walked up to the incident, you could smell pear drops. And for me, that's what CS gas smells like. It smells like pear drops. Get you out of here. I'm going to stand you up. Yeah, yeah, stand you way. Up. yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> oh, my eyes, man. All right. Oh, man. CS, OK, it oh. will ease off in oh. a minute. Yeah, but the thing is, I you just have to be patient. All right, no, you're all right. I can't, man. Yeah. I'll do it. Stand up. Stand up. I can't do up, anything bro. other than oh. you've just got to oh. bear no. with it. Okay, no. and I'll ease off in a minute. No, my legal rights told me you can do some of my eyes. I can't. Yeah. Trust me. I will give you if I... 30 <laughs> seconds to do some of my eyes. Listen. Otherwise, I'm putting complaint against you all Listen. over Listen. there. One, I can't do anything. Two, Come down, Come three, right? Come down, four. What are you suggesting I do then for your eyes? The only way that that will cure is you standing and the wind blowing it away from your face. Most of Nottingham appears to be well versed in the legal profession. You've just got to bite your tongue and you just let them babble on. We treat everyone the same, but by Christ, as some of them go on and on and on and claim to be almost the victim. Ah, oh, you're hurting my arm! I'm not trying to hurt your arm, just, ah, just, 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 just suggested it. 
thing that people moan about the most is the handcuffs. Just get them right? Get them off. No, we're not going to get them off. How do you get them off now? If they cooperate, when you're putting the handcuffs on, then it shouldn't cause them any pain. They're not fluffy handcuffs, they're, they're to restrain you because we need to. One of the favourite sayings of a police officer is they're not built for comfort. A load of bollocks. No, I'm not sit sitting down. down. No, sit down. the camera's there, yeah? yeah, yeah I am not down. arguing with nobody, no. yeah? My name is Robert Stilwell. I pay my taxes that pay all these wages. I have done nothing wrong, yeah? And all these officers are hurting me. I pay your wages and you must have been bullied at school. How many times do we hear that when you're out and about at work? So were you? Uh, no, I wasn't bullied at school. <laughs> <laughs> No, never happened, unfortunately, and I'm a bit ginger as well, so that's hard to believe, isn't it? Ginger kid not getting bullied at school, but there you go, say la vie. Get off me! I will... Oh, no! Oh, swear to God! Oh, my God! You are seriously hurt! Get in! Get in! Get in! Get in. Sit down. What do you mean, get in? Do it. Oh, my God. Right, It's 1.15 in the morning. Response officer PC Steve Newman is called to the scene of an assault on a young mentally disabled man. While the attackers have fled, the victim's father is preventing the ambulance crew from treating his son. Hold on. Go away. Oh, no, I just, go away. Yeah. Oh, just, just, go away just and leave him alone. I'm his dad. Go away and leave him alone. No, no, just go away and leave him alone. We're there for a reason. And as much as he wants to air his views, you know, he has to, re he has to realise that we've got a responsibility, not just to him, uh, but to his son. Please, get off me. Let, let the paramedics have a look at him. Hold him, man. Because I just want them to do their job. But I want to see right. if my son's OK. Just hang on here a minute. Well, let, right. let them sort no, him out first. Me, right. Please, let go of me. There's no reason for you to hold me. There's no you reason for you to hold me. You. I'm calm. Right. Okay. Thank just, you. I'm just, concerned about my son. Right. You're not helping so grabbing hold of me. So let him get treated. You're not helping me. He's got a cut in his... Look, one, two, right. three, four, five, six, exactly. seven, eight, nine coppers for yeah. one lad. Well, you You're ridiculous. Let him get his treatment. You're ridiculous. Everything. You've got to listen to them. You know, you, you need to do that. You need to listen to what they're saying. But on the flip side, you need to be taking action. Every time I move anywhere, you're grabbing hold of me like I'm some dog. We need to keep you here, right? right. Mate. Come on, look. What am I doing right. wrong? I just said to you, don't go in the back of the ambulance. I'm not going in the back of the ambulance, am I? Leave me alone then. What? You cause a lot of problems, you lot do. You don't help. You don't you don't listen. Try listening to people for a change instead of blurring off and think that you know everything yourself. You try you listening don't. as well. So if your son had got a big hole in the back of his head and somebody's well, telling let you them do their if job somebody's now. telling you, yes. yeah, to do as you're told, what would you be saying now? What would you be saying? Do as I'm told. Don't even go there, mate. Exactly. If you're doing exactly the same as me as a worried parent. You wouldn't be letting nobody crap hold of you. Well, as a worried parent, you should allow them people to do what they're doing. All it is, is you not think you're big and strong. That's why you kept squeezing my arm really tight, like I'm a muppet. I'm, a, I'm an innocent bystander, yeah? I work. I'm actually a full-time carer to my son. And you're stopping me from going to my son. I'm going. I'm putting in a formal complaint. He's in good hands I'm putting a formal moment. complaint. He's in good hands, hands isn't he? Yeah, I'm fine. Because he's, he's disabled. Okay. That's fair enough. He's mentally and physically yeah, disabled. Well, you won't let me go to him. And I'm his full-time carer. You won't let me go to him. You can go and see him. Second. Whether it's based on past experience, you know, an aversion to the uniform, I don't know. It's, it's, it's sometimes it's difficult to pinpoint why people don't want to talk to us or don't want us there. What do you guys do between jobs? Well, proactively target criminals I'm using the Nottinghamshire's uh, road system. I think's the uh, technical phrase. I just call it go hunting. So far, has got any previous for uh, dwelling burglaries or anything like that? Burglary in the dwelling. You'll do me. Yeah. Smell a bit of cannabis, mate. Is there any cannabis in the car? You got any on you? No. Right. I'm going to search you anyway because obviously I can't smell it on you. Well, we've got a car, Job Seekers Lounge. And so far, three phones. Kind of makes you wonder why I bother working, really, doesn't it? Bundle of cash. Where's that come from? You know, you can ask questions, uh, depends how much it is. If they're on job seekers, are they, have they got a job that's paying them that cash and they're defrauding the system? Or have they not got a job and they're getting it from, from somewhere else? 
Why does anyone need three mobile phones? I don't know. Maybe, you know, one's for work, one's for pleasure and one's a spare. Maybe it's because they're a drug dealer. It's late afternoon and PC Steve Newman and PC Andy Watson respond to an incident in the city centre. Four alcoholics drinking on the street, fighting amongst themselves over whose turn it was to have the next bite out of the cheese sandwich. What did he call you? Fat Mongo. Was it Fat Mong? It was a Fat Mong, I think. He was going to carry on chirping, offensive language like that, so I wanted him well away. He got the opportunity to go away, but he wasn't quick enough, really. So I think I shoved him on his arse, didn't I? Hey, move away. Stand by, stand by, please. I'm going. Go then, walk away then. Walk away then. You get yourself arrested, aren't you, okay? You've had enough warnings. Give me my jacket. Wait there then, I'll get your jacket. What are you doing? I mean, to make something. Just put your hands behind your back for me a minute. No problem. Let's get things sorted out and you can get on your way. So once he was handcuffed, he'd very kindly asked me to go and retrieve his coat. Can you have my jacket, Mongo? Yes, we're going to get your jacket. But because he got no teeth and a mouth full of sandwich, every time he was abusing me, I was getting sprayed with cheese sandwich. Why did you shoot yeah. me back? Because I told you three times to go away. You were the one to make an issue. I was right. going away. Right. I'm walking up here. You stopped spinning. I was going okay. away. Oh, right. Right. Thanks for that. Shh. But Quiet. Zip it. Keep that mango away from me, please. I'll check you in. Yeah, yeah, come in, yeah. You're a top four. Because you're a top four. I'm happy with the fat. I think, I think Mongol is, uh, that is offensive. Uh, and I am born of wedlock, so... Sort of, uh, he's got one out of three, perhaps, but the others, no. Been called a twat on a number of occasions. Um, been called a on a number of occasions. A fucking on a number of occasions. It is offensive, and, and I think it's offensive for members of the public who are walking past and walking down the street to see people speaking to the police like that. Hey, you Just Let go! Let go! I'm not doing anything. Let fucking go! Oh, no. You fucking dress. But a judge recently said that police... Police should officers should accept it. I, I don't think I should accept it. I don't think I should accept being spoken to like that. Well, you've got the wrong man. You better get my solicitor. Let's get booked in and get sorted Yeah, let's out. fuck off. Why did you arm a bit? Press no, that in there. No, you carry it. Well, no, no. So we stay all day then, because you're not going to be able I, to get I in. I care. Anyone carry it. Well, you carry it. You're going to floor them while I open the door. Steve. I don't care. Okay. Well, I'm searching you first, just to let you know. Have you got anything sharp in your pockets? I might have. What have you got in your pockets? I don't know. Because your officer took me all over the place. So I don't yeah, know. So okay. Do you take drugs? Um, do I take drugs? Yeah. I use a bit of them. Uh, okay, do you inject or do you, uh, how do you get... take it? Oh What's the offence? Uh, being drunk and disorderly. You're drunk and disorderly. You're obviously just never never for nothing. If you listen to me. What's the place of arrest? Uh, exchange walk in the city. Fucking wankers. You're not worth a wank, are you? Yeah. Not yeah. worth I'll, that. I'll, you shove me over. Stop waving your hands around, Steve. Oh, well, shut up. What's your surname, please? Drain. You... Say again. Drain. You know, if you stop keep shouting, I'll be able to Drain. Do it How do you spell it? I didn't drain. B-R-A-I-N. You know why you're behaving like that? You're not well, helping you're yourself, like are you? Thing. How did you make soldiers? Well, I'm sure a lot of people will be able to answer that, mate. May I have a drink of water now? No, Please. not until I've gone through details. What's your first name? Stephen Andrew. How do you spell Stephen? With a P-H. What's your middle name? Andrew! Why are you shouting? Because you're not listening. No, that's because you're mumbling. Fuck off. And you wonder why you've been arrested? We've got a state. And you want to drink of water? Jeez. What's your date of birth, mate, please? 
just in the guitar. What's your date of birth? Yeah, yeah. Fuck you, lot. Alright, let's go take you to a show then. I'm the same, I'm the same. Why were you telling me I drink a water and I'm sure you're still with us. We're waiting for CPS. No problem. I've got more You're a very about silly individual, mate. You need and to grow up. Take your shoes off. Take your shoes off. I'm a very silly individual. Can you give me some of the nicknames that cops use to describe the people that you come across? One of the most common ones, I suppose, is snuff. What does that mean? I think it means subnormal and fucking useless. It's like a fender profile, and you see somebody who looks like that on the street, that may be what your class has, your snaff. The first part's a bit harsh, the second part's quite realistic. They are stupid, why, why can they not do as all the other normal people do? Emergency, what's the emergency? Hello, um, there's loads of fighting going on, there's blood everywhere, there's kids all about. Can you just send someone up, please? He's badly bleeding, yeah, he's an ambulance, We've had a further call, send us about 30 different fighting outside. It was... My daughter's birthday party, she was 14. I think there'd been a falling out between family, some family love had been going off and they ended up knocking three bells of shit out of each other, as families do. Just calm down, don't race to the level. Just stay up here, out of the way. There was blood everywhere, people crying, screaming. And it's just something that you wouldn't want. You would want someone to come and sort it out because it was just out of hand. Is it, is it family? All family? Yeah, but all family. Have you seen this girl? My husband's food. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Who's thrown the first punch? I don't know because I'm on the floor. Right, OK. Come here. No, you're not judging by your foot. OK, just leave her alone. She doesn't want it. Yeah, but she's covered in blood. She doesn't want it. It was horrible because there was kids around and you don't want to see children see that you don't you don't want them to be there around it you just want to get them away from it are you not are you always like this 13 14 year old children that were seeing absolutely smashed out of their brains with the adults and the people who are meant to be responsible for them being exactly the same Inside and shut up. I don't live here. I don't care. Just stay out of it. Stay out of it. The man beat me up. Stay out of it. Get off my fucking top. Don't speak to me like that. The police turned around and said, I need to go. Like, yeah, you need to go away. And apparently I said to him, yeah, you need to F off. I got slammed to the ground. Just just step back. I could not recall swearing at all. Why can't you remember? Because I was a little bit drunk. But I'm young, I'm only 14, they shouldn't have done that. It was absolutely disgusting. The police have to come and deal with the situation, but they could deal with it more better than what they dealt with it that night. Had she been taking care of her daughter? Had her daughter not been intoxicated? Had her daughter probably moved when we first asked her to move? That situation would never have happened. Have you not been told to stop drinking in the street? Yo, you are you going home or are you coming with me? Walk that way and go home. Go home and grow up. Fucking matter man. Fucking man. Are they educated? I would say a lot of them probably aren't. Do they work? I would say probably a lot of them don't. So what have they got in life? And the thing is, they'll pass that down to the next generation and it will be the whole spiral effect again. And where does it stop? If you could change anything that night, what would it be? To have a really good birthday party for my daughter. And obviously, um, 
No booze. No alcohol at all. Until after probably nine, ten o'clock. We have got a van coming down. Please take them in. You fucking wake up. You are what? You need to come home now. Hey, hang on. It's an asshole. It's an asshole. Uh, okay. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. No, too late, darling. I've got a rest as well. How would you like to live in a street like that? I wouldn't. You wouldn't live in a street like that or you wouldn't like to? Both. I'm sick to death of telling you to go. I've got to get my keys, shit. You can fuck off with your keys. You're walking down here and you're not coming back. You're an adult yeah. in front of all these children. Yeah. And what if you come past this lab post, you're going to be arrested. It's almost like they're just blowing a raspberry like a five-year-old. It's just madness, and people don't act the rage. You know, you'd expect an adult to act like an adult, but they don't. What makes grown adults behave like children? Alcohol. I just want to go home. I've had enough of you. Well, can I've you get my keys then? I've had enough of you. You've had at least eight warnings from me. You told me to fuck off and call me a six times. All I want is my keys. I can't go home. Home. A summer's evening in 2011. Rival gangs have gathered in Nottingham city centre. CCTV captures one of the gang members being stabbed in the leg. It has been referred to as a shit-on-shit shit crime in the past. You get your gang element that are stabbing each other and having to go at each other with weapons to put across who's the biggest and strongest gang or to enforce drug debts and stuff like that. So you'll get baddies stabbing baddies. Right, your victim is on camera. Looks like he's been he's got a leg injury to his leg. The name check we've done on the victim coming uh, from the Brewsters Road area. Historically, there's always been tensions between the Brewsters Road crew and some of the gangs are from the Radford area. We've got the Brewsters Road crew. The Waterfront Gang. There's Rad NPR. What's NPR? Money, power, respect. Money, they're greedy, they want the fast buck, they don't want to work for a living, do they? Anything other than have a job. Power. <laughs> Is that what they've got? Is it really? Yeah, whatever. And respect? No. It doesn't sound like the victim's being very cooperative with the uh, central officers at the scene. Very rare that somebody gets caught in the crossfire. 99.9% .9 of the time it's, it's a turf war thing. You know, somebody owes somebody some money or one gang member has started to operate in somebody else's area. Do you know what the biggest gang is in Nottingham? My gang? I would say, yeah. It's a good gang to be in. It's always going to be our gang that's going to win. Any officer that uh, can assist the Queen Adelaide pub, start travelling, please. It's the end of July, and a fight has broken out after police used CS gas while arresting a man they had chased into a pub. Two rounds up the street. We're trying to calm the situation down. The officers are struggling to deal with the fallout from the CS gas use as a wedding party are caught up in the incident. There are people here who are not happy. Thank you. 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 Sometimes you can't antagonise situations simply by being there, and especially if loads turn up, just a massive magnet for bother. Fuck out of here, not doing oh, mate. You arrested me for no reason. I'm going out from the situation. Oh, 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 yes, the pregnant lady. Your job is a woman. Your job is a woman. I lost her baby. That was murder me. Get on the floor. Get down on the floor. We do it. Leave her there. Leave her there. Leave her there. Go away. You cowards. Go away. Leave her there. 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 Le
this game! Calm down! You've got on every single one, one of your last numbers, yeah? Back, back away! Yeah? Arrest me right, you little bitch! Yeah? Do you think that the uniform commands respect? No. Used to. Not nowadays. Should it? Just because you wear a uniform doesn't necessarily mean you should instantaneously have respect. Um, I think it's your, your actions create respect, really, don't they? It's getting near you, spring, you know, she's pregnant. Are you going to check on her? Or is that how sad you are? She's in the you want to bring her out in the fresh air? She, yeah? She's scared to come out and she's terrible. I'm bringing her back to her. Really? Because she needs to come out in the fresh air if she's been suffered really at the to see her. She's all right now. Oh, she's all right now, is she? Oh, no. Don't put any water on it. Okay, this shit needs numbers. What tells us on? Everybody needs numbers. But don't put water on it, because all that does is make it worse. It won't... It won't... Well, it's really good telling that now, is it? Fear for your life. Fear for your life. You're all going to be nothing. Turn your hand down and go away, because you're a big man. Big man. Gangster. They're going to say fuck the police, they're going to not like you, they're going to try and get in your face by virtue of the fact that we are their enemy. <laughs> You do get a bit of the old brat brat type thing from uh, some of the uh, kids on the street, but whatever. On the 4th of August 2011, armed police shoot dead a man on the streets of Tottenham. Mr Duggan was killed by a single gunshot wound to the chest. He also had a second gunshot wound in his arm. When you hear about the Mark Duggan shooting, what's the first thing that you think of? Personally, I would think that he's put himself in a position where officers have had no other alternative. My sympathy lies with the cops that have pulled the trigger, um, as opposed to Lado that's been shot. I think it's uh, a difficult situation for armed officers, and I, I would imagine that they've dealt with it professionally and proportionately. I just think it kind of snowballed. People really did take the opportunity there to just behave like animals. What's it like to be hated by that many people? Can't say, I ever think about it. Are you quite thick skinned? It just doesn't interest me in the slightest what some of these people think, to be fair. And that's if they actually do think in the first place. Buses, cars, shops were all set on fire. What erupted last night took police by surprise and virtually an entire high street has been destroyed. Answer the question, why did you come here? Hide behind your sheets and help Fight like a man! I think police are always the target. Whatever demonstration you have, police will always be the target. The next day, the disorder in London spreads across the country and police in Nottingham gear up for a busy night. Had a briefing. There's a lot of mention of petrol bombs, uh, hence the overalls, just in case we get caught out or something. Expect some trouble. We're getting up, son. Do I put my ball suit on? Uh, yeah. If you say so, sunshine. <laughs> there is an immediate call for assistance. <laughs> Meadows Police Station's been attacked. There's currently a vehicle outside of the fire and officers asking for assistance. Talk to him, six. Building possibly on fire as well. Well, fucking hell. The police station's being attacked. Uh, uh, and you know, and that's not something you hear every day when you're out on patrol, obviously. There's a gang of about 20 bricking the windows here. Don't get a sight of anyone, yeah. any one of them. Then you're just surveying this scene 
of like carnage, like being in the bloody war zone. I've never seen anything like it. So there's not much point in us deploying out into the estates. We're just going to get isolated. And if there's more of these fools marauding around with petrol bombs and everything else, then we're going to and we're going to get ourselves isolated. Elsewhere in the city, another Nottingham police station comes under attack from rioters. If ever there was a chance of one of us getting hurt, it was going to be that night. Adrenaline's pumping, you know, it's, you know, it's one of those things. You know, you go into work and it's all going off in your ear and your earpiece. These people clearly didn't care what they were doing um, and wanted to show us that. Seeing what happened in London and then seeing it open up throughout the country, you know, all the different cities, and then in the city that you work. There was an element of shock there, that, that they would target a police station with people inside it. What were their thoughts? What were they trying to do? And then relaying that back to, I've got a whole night shift to come, and if they're trying to petrol bomb a police station with cops inside it, what are they going to do to us out on the street? The tension was in the air, you could feel it. It was kind of strange, it was just crazy, it was just crazy, it's nothing I've seen before. There's a section 60 in place at the moment, which means we've got the power to remove face coverings and hoods, so people can be readily identifiable on CCTV, um, so uh, it wouldn't take his hood down, so I took it down for him. Reports come in that a group of teenagers are gathering in a housing estate just outside the city. It was basically just a, a large group of lads in dark clothes, hoodies, hoods up, masks and scarves over their faces. So you can literally just see the, sort of the whites of their eyes. Paxton Gold, Michelle being thrown. There they are. There they are. Yeah. There they are. It was just like they're marauding through the estate you know, with bricks in their hand, and then, you know, setting wheelie bins of light, kicking stuff over. Get them, go and get them, go and get them. Sorry, mate. Yes, yes, need officers, Paxton Gardens now. Officers and vehicles under attack from a group of about 40. It's kind of, I know what's coming, um, but also, you know, how bad's it gonna get? Just do one, mate. Go to. Oh, you fucker. Vehicle attacked. <laughs> yeah, we've just been bricked. From Papa 3 4, our vehicle's just been bricked along with several pandas. We need PSUs here, PDQ. If you want people PDQ, you want people pretty damn quick, and we did that night. Your heart's in your throat and your adrenaline is, is pumping, you know, you. And you, you know that you've had the adrenaline afterwards because you, you're shaking, you know, you, you can feel that release it and that was definitely one of those moments. One of our windows has? Yeah. Back window's gone mate. Fucking brilliant. Yeah. What we got? Got a hole in the police car is what we got. No, it looks like you've taken two. Yeah we have to, yeah. We've taken one there. I'll tell you what mate, they were large stones. So you've taken was a one brick. there. That was a brick mate. There was talk afterwards of they're coming at me with a piece of concrete and a brick and they're trying to lob it through the window of this car and I'm driving down the road at 40 mile an hour. This could kill me. So would I have been justified in driving straight at them? You know, and taking them out because trying to get to them before they kill me. It's extreme, isn't it, to say we could have been killed, but I think if ever it was gonna happen, it felt like it that night. How are we going to deal with this? Where, where is this going to end? Are they going to kill a cop? You know, whether that be in Nottingham or, or London or Liverpool, wherever that might be, you know, that, that was the feeling, I think, at the back of my mind. How far were they willing to take this? The morning after, the worst rioting the UK has seen in a generation. In Nottingham, the clean-up has already begun. There are pockets of our society that are not just broken, but frankly sick. For me, the root cause is a complete lack of responsibility in parts of our society. People allowed to feel that the world owes them something 
that their rights outweigh their responsibilities and that they, their actions do not have consequences. Well, they do have consequences. Whatever resources the police need, they will get. Whatever tactics the police feel they need to employ, they will have legal backing to do so. We will do whatever is necessary to restore law and order onto our streets. It was all about public reassurance and reassuring the communities that police were on the streets and it wasn't going to happen the night after or the night after that. I am quietly confident, without obviously meeting each and every one of these people, that uh, the vast majority of them, if not all of them, are people that we know about through one reason or another. Did we lose control? Um, momentarily, I think we did, yeah. But we got it back. With police officers drafted in from neighbouring forces, another night of rioting fails to materialise. You, you win the odd battle, you lose an odd battle, but the war's always there. We're never going to be able to say, right, that's it, we've sorted crime, there is no crime, you know, we win type thing. It's never going to be like that. There's always going to be a criminal element in society, so therefore you're always going to want the police. With the streets deserted, the police take advantage of their numbers and decide to go looking for one of the city's most prolific criminals. Tenfold Division have just arrived now, we'll just uh, see what the crack is. There was some information came through that the, uh, the forces most wanted, uh, an individual who was wanted for a burglary, um, was at a house party in, in the city centre. Is that the, the back here, you know? Officers were tasked to go round to the rear of the property to make sure he didn't escape out the back. And I was one of the officers who was tasked to go into the front of the house. Go on, do the door, he's running out the back. Where is he? Yeah, I've got the right hand side gone. Guys, we've got people climbing over the fence at the rear. Police officer! Stay where you are! Hey, it's 12 officers, just be aware of the city I've got kids in bed, mate. I've got kids in bed! Yeah, oh, 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 oh. NH, I can see him to the rear. This person went out the back door over some uh, fences and managed to uh, escape into the grounds of Nottingham University. That's a fucking nightmare to get over, that is. He's over there, you can see him. He's over there, I can see him. Have you got it? I can't get over there, I'm going to hurt myself. I can feel it. I was livid. I was fuming. Because it's a bit of that's only out of frustration that the fact you could have arrested this person who's been wanted for ages and then managed to get away when you, it's actually somewhere where you know he was as well. What a fuck up. I know. Is the rear containment on? Yes. You move forward. Well, I was going to the rear with division. Somebody threw a punch at me in the ass, you know. Did they? Fucking you for gold front teeth. Want to chat with the one with a beanie head, the fat one? I'll bring him out. Thank you. you. Yeah, okay, I'll wait here. What is the fat one? Who's the fat one with a beanie hat? <laughs> Out of a group of people in the house, I think that was a quite a good description. The fact that he was fat, he had a beanie hat on and he had a gold tooth. And there's only one person in there who fitted that description. What do you mean, no? You're under arrest. Please assault. You don't have to say anything. My only friends for me, I'm going to try and call it. And if you do something, they're giving evidence. Come this way. Can I get an officer? Please, officer. Obstructing me and my duties as well. Fuck off. Officer, come on. You not get charged. It locks you up all night, then. Yeah, but for what? 
Just Piece of obstruction. You see, you're knocking on the door like that. Right? I don't see this as the point, officer. I do, it ruins your night, doesn't it? Yeah, for what, though? Thank you. Put this seat for yeah, we'll do. It is one big, huge game, and that's how everyone views it, I think, unfortunately. Back to the playground, cops and robbers. They have fun doing what they do, and if we lock them up, they can't do it anymore. So what have they got? The man arrested in the park was released without charge. No knife was ever recovered. Stephen Drain was charged with being drunk and disorderly. He failed to turn up at court and a warrant was issued for his arrest. Officers of the law are doing a proper Mongol job. Nottinghamshire Police made 131 arrests for public order offences on the night of the riots. Jesus Christ, let go of this arm so I can get my shoulder in here, an idiot. God! How's that one really possible? The man in the beanie hat has been arrested 23 times. He was released without charge the following morning. Uh, think I'm a dick. A dick, dick. Remember that, yeah? Remember that. I'm not there to be the friend. I'm there to disrupt and potentially lock them up. Whether they like me or not, I don't give two hoots, quite frankly. They hate us. We spoil everybody's day, don't we? The friendly neighbourhood beat bobbies. Ah, oh, there you go. On the front line of broken Britain. Uh, Cuy pigs, scum, threaten you. Come in here. I'll bite your nose straight off your fucking